Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alice and if you are new here, and today I am sharing a DIY nursery makeover. My husband Christian and I are so excited to be expecting our first baby this coming January, and I am very excited to get to turn our old office into baby girl's nursery. So you can see here I have my desk set up, and it's kind of been overrun with all of the baby things. Baby girl is so loved by all of her extended family, and we have been showered with gifts, and and without a nursery or a dresser or anywhere to organize it, I've kind of just tossed it into this room. And since we're gonna be working on this room, I'm kind of just clearing everything out. We have a guest bedroom right around the corner from here, so everything is just being plopped in there for the time being while we work on this room and completely transform it into a DIY makeover, somewhat on a budget. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing lots of nursery makeover ideas, but also DIY ideas that you can do anywhere in your home. A lot of these things are tried and true for me, that I've done a couple of times before. You might recognize some of the DIYs, but they can truly be done anywhere. The only thing that makes this a nursery is that we're building a crib and having a very tiny little mattress instead of like a normal full-size mattress. So I hope this video gives you tons of home decorating inspiration, DIY ideas, and motivates you and shows you that you really can make a room like this come together on a budget by yourself. And if you are enjoying these videos, I have a quick favor to ask. It is completely free to you guys to subscribe, like, and leave a comment on this video. All of those things tell YouTube that you are truly enjoying this video and this content and want to see more of it from me. It really helps my channel and it's just the biggest compliment you can give to me. So if you are enjoying this video, please like this video. Please Please subscribe for more. I have tons of content coming out for you guys, baby organization, room makeovers, all of it is all over my channel. And if you ever want to be behind the scenes of my channel and seeing videos and sneak peeks before they come out on YouTube, head over to my Instagram account. It's also linked down below. I am always on my stories and sharing sneak peeks for you guys there. But enough self-promotion, we are well into putting together this IKEA dresser. I will link everything I used in this video, or at least everything I can find for you guys, down below in the description bar. But this is the Idanis dresser from IKEA. Uh, we bought it brand new from IKEA. I think it was maybe around $300. Not a horrible price, but also not their cheapest dresser. This one has soft closed drawers and just felt a little bit higher quality, so that's why we chose this one. And uh, it was quite a beast to put together. Since I am in my third trimester, I definitely took it a lot slower and a lot easier on myself for this room makeover. A lot of times I am rushing to get things done and trying to cram as much into each workday as possible. But here I split up building the dresser into two separate days, took it easy on myself. It's also a reminder for you guys that these makeover videos seem very, very quick and fast paced. But in reality, I am spending weeks total filming this. So you can just watch all my outfit changes, probably watch the bump grow as we go through this video, but don't be discouraged if you're starting a project and it feels like it's taking forever. We spend a lot of time and a lot of things go on behind the scenes that don't even make the final cut on camera that go into these rooms. But the drawers are in the dresser. I'll show you the drawer pulls in a little bit, but first thing I wanna address is painting this green wall. We painted this wall ourselves when we moved in and thought this would be an office space for us, but with Baby Girl's Nursery, it just didn't match the rest of the theme in here, so we got a color match swatch from Home Depot to match the rest of the paint color. For some reason, our landlord did not wanna tell us the exact paint color name. So even though we are painting it the same color as all the other walls in this space and the same color as the ceiling, um, I wanted to tape it off just to be safe in case it was a slightly different shade. So here I'm gonna just be extra cautious. I love to use painter's tape. I am definitely not someone who is skilled enough to just go freehand on all of the edges in the corners. And I also wanna give a quick shout out to my favorite paintbrush to use. It is very inexpensive, very affordable, but they are very durable. I've had them for many projects. My last one, actually, I had to throw away because I was too lazy to wash it and I was very mad that I had to buy it again. But if you're looking for a good detail brush like this, this is my number one recommendation. Oh, 
For the bulk of the wall though, I am gonna use a generic roller. Nothing special or fancy about this one. Can't even link it for you if I wanted to. I think these are pretty much all the same, but don't take my word for that, but I never get very picky about these rollers. I normally opt for the cheapest paint, but because I was painting a light color over a much darker color, I bought a nicer quality paint. It had the primer built into it, and I still had to do two coats of paint on this wall. So to save myself from washing all of this, I wrapped the roller in the paint tray in saran wrap and put my paintbrush in a little plastic bag. That's a little trick for saving you from having to wash your brushes a bunch, because as you already know, I hate washing my brushes. But after a second coat of paint, letting it dry the full day, taking the tape off, it looked pretty darn close to the color. Like I doubt our landlord when we move out is gonna have any problems with this being the paint color on the wall, but I had to be careful for other projects going forward because it was still slightly different. Like I could not use this can of paint to touch up the other walls perfectly, but very happy with how this wall turned out and it really just brightened up this entire room. And you'll see as we get farther into the decorating process in this space that we went with a very light, airy, and neutral theme. So having that dark green wall really just took away from the space. Now to finish off the dresser, I did wanna change up the knobs that came with the dresser. Ikea gives you 12 standard knobs and I played with the idea of replacing all of them and just buying new ones, but there were 12 knobs on this one dresser and that would have added up pretty quickly. So I decided to just stick with a $5 can of spray paint and do this little simple DIY the old fashioned way. I really loved how they turned out and because there are so many knobs on this dresser, it kind of works out that this pull is so simple. But it was a very quick DIY to customize this piece to fit the style of the room it was in. If you guys watch any of my other makeovers, you know that I generally like to keep our main furniture pieces and just repurpose them. But for this room, we just didn't have a crib on hand, so we didn't have any other option but to buy one. So I found this one from Ikea. It's pretty basic, it's really popular, but you really can't beat the price point. It's only $80 and it's super clean and super cute and very neutral and super trendy too. The only hard part about this was that we kind of had to go on a witch hunt to be able to find it in stock. I had notifications turned on and we went to Ikea, I think three times total because it said it was in stock and then it wasn't. But finally we secured it. It was worth the effort because cribs can get pretty pricey and this one also converts into a toddler bed in the future. So a great crib, a great price and worth the struggle to hunt it down and actually get it into our house. Um, I called in Christian to help with this one because honestly I was just feeling tired this day and I really like that we put her crib together well together. For the crib mattress, we went with the Newton Baby mattress. I don't know if it's fully necessary to have a breathable mattress, but that's the concept behind this one, that if baby rolls over in the middle of the night, they can breathe through this mattress fully. So fear marketing is definitely selling me on anything nowadays with our first baby, but I think this will be a great crib for her. The next DIY happening in this space is some wall molding. You guys have seen in other videos that I love to do this. It really just elevates any space and just adds a whole lot of character to the wall walls without really cluttering them. Sometimes hanging lots of pictures and frames or shelves and decor can really clutter a space, but I think wall molding is the perfect solution to 
add some dimension and interest to the wall without making it look kind of cheap or cluttered. So to do this DIY, all we did is buy a bunch of wall molding at our local Home Depot. Christian cut it all down to size for me. And then with this scotch mounting tape, I am going to just cut little pieces and put it all over the back of the board. This is pretty renter friendly too. Well, at least I'm hoping it is. I've pulled a couple of them off the wall before and they come off cleanly. So it should be a safe project to do in a renting situation like we are in. But basically all you do is measure out these squares that you want for the molding, measure two or three times to make sure you have the measurements right and have a level handy to make sure it all has straight lines. The hard part about these projects is that they're really easy to look like you did them yourself. So focusing on the details and making sure that you spend a lot of time getting the measurements straight and making sure they're perfectly level will really be the difference between this looking like a DIY craft project versus wall molded that your house actually came with. So this is gonna go all over her bedroom. You're gonna see me jumping on almost every single wall, every wall but her crib. We have something else planned for that, so stay tuned for the video to see what we're doing behind the crib. But wall molding is going pretty much everywhere else in this room. Another tip to make your wall molding look very professional and not DIY is to get some wood filler and go into every single seam where all the corners meet up and fill this in. I actually do not recommend the wood filler I am using in this video. It was actually like the worst product I have ever worked with, but it's all I had and it was late at night. I will link down below my favorite one from Amazon that's actually cheaper than this one and way easier to work with. You can just leave your molding this white color or paint it any color you desire, but I really like the look of it being the same color of the wall, having it blend in and look like it was always meant to be here. So here I am grabbing just some touch-up paint and another paintbrush and just going to town. I also ended up doing two coats of this for it to look nice. So here you can see it drying after one coat, and then I'm gonna show you some clips from going over one more time for a second coat of paint. I always like to make sure it is fully opaque and you're not seeing any of the white peeking out from the molding underneath. With some YouTube magic, I'm gonna clean up all of the tiny pieces of tape left behind on the floor and then move on to a really fun decorating DIY. I don't know if you can call this a full DIY because I bought both of these pieces from Ikea, the hanging pendant shade and this light. It was a very inexpensive way to add a light to this room and I also liked it how it wasn't gonna be taking up any floor space. Over here underneath this is where we're planning to put baby girl's hamper and also her diaper pail. So I love the idea of not having a floor lamp sitting there too. Now the total focal point of this room, the first idea I had when it came to designing this space was featuring this beautiful wallpaper from A New Wall. I will have them linked below and they so kindly gifted me this wallpaper to use in Baby Girl's Nursery and to share with you guys. And I am so thrilled to be working with them. They are an awesome company with tons and tons of wallpaper options. So check out their website if you are looking for any of your wallpaper needs. They have murals, they have more kid focused ones, adult focused ones, anything that you can imagine, they have in a very cool wallpaper format. So I'm following the instructions included in my package and step one was to roll out all of the pieces in the box, lay them out flat, 
and then we're gonna get to hanging. Wallpaper can be pretty tricky, so definitely recommend looking up a couple tips. My number one tip before starting to hang your wallpaper, like the best prep work you can do, is to get a level and measure out a level line on your wall where the first panel will line up with. So these panels were 25 inches wide and they had a two inch overlap over onto the left wall. So I measured out 23 inches onto the side of the wall, drew a straight and level line. That way I had something to line up my panel to, to keep them level and to keep this project moving smoothly. I will say when doing any project with wallpaper and hanging it yourself, bring a lot of patience with you, have a lot of free time, and I also recommend having somebody else to help you. I was a little impatient because Christian was still at work, so I tried to start this project myself and spent a lot of time hanging up these first two panels. And once Christian was home from work and able to help, things went a lot smoother and went a whole lot faster. So definitely recommend having someone else to help you. And also one of these little squeegee tools can be pretty handy too. And do not be fooled by YouTube making this super fast and looking very effortless. We made a lot of mistakes along the way. Thankfully, this wallpaper is very forgiving and we pulled it up a couple of times and were able to reposition it. But like I said, it wouldn't have been possible to make all of these adjustments without two people. So definitely save this project for when you have an extra set of hands to help you. We weren't able to get the last panel up on this day, Christian had to head back to work, so I decided to just clean up all of the edges with a very sharp X-Acto blade or box cutter. I went along the edges and it cuts pretty cleanly and really easily, so I just went along with my little squeegee tool. I found this tool most helpful to get the edges into the corner really sharp and really clean, so I was just going along with that, cutting it off, and then just dumping it in a pile. You do want to be careful though to not have the wallpaper stick to itself while you're dropping it down. That happened like one time and I had a minor freak out that I was ruining the wallpaper but crisis averted and then by the next day we were ready to go tackle the last panel of wallpaper and also the last couple of projects this is the last outfit you guys are gonna see in this video because on this day we pulled the rest of this room together This last house in the mural was my absolute favorite, so I hated that our window cut into it, but to save a little bit more of it, I decided to actually wrap the wall going around our windowsill, so you still get to see a little bit more of that building, which I absolutely love. So a little bit more careful cutting work with the X-Acto knife, and that was all done, and then we only have to clean up this one edge of the wall where we had the last panel go up, and the wallpaper wall is complete. Now moving back to the other side of the room, we are going to wrap up the wall above the dresser and we are going to hang a mirror. And this was also another frustrating project for us. I probably made it a little more challenging than I needed it to be. I really wanted it centered in the middle of the wall molding we had put up and it was just a little bit challenging to do the math, to get the screws in the right way, to get it all flush against the wall. And then also hanging this was pretty tricky because it's a flush mirror. So it is very difficult to see where you're actually hanging it. So we went through a couple different options, made sure it was absolutely perfect and secure and safe for baby girl. And also this mirror is linked from Target. I'll have that down below for you guys.
The mirror going up is the last thing in this room that we needed any tools or drills or screwdrivers for. So I was so excited to get all of these cleared out of her space and get on to some of the fun decorating parts of this video. So we have one more piece of furniture to sneak in here and it is this swivel rocking chair that we got from Target. It is in a cream linen color. It also has the recliner so the feet pop out and it is so comfortable. We've honestly been enjoying it downstairs in our living room just for having an extra seating option and we might actually move it downstairs for the first couple months of baby girl's life when we'll more likely be down there. But with everything in place in this room, I wanna give it a good wipe down before we get to the fun decorating part. You guys know that I love this part of the room coming together because even though all of the big DIYs made a big change in this room, the room doesn't feel complete until all of the little decor pieces are really brought in. So with the floors freshly vacuumed, everything wiped down, and all of the dust in this room taken care of, I'm gonna bring back in that same rug. It's from Amazon, a really, really good price. We actually used to keep it down in the living room, and we're gonna just keep repurposing that for this space, and then I'm gonna start the decorating process. Now, we don't have absolutely everything purchased for Baby Girl yet. Don't stress me out about it. We still have a couple months to get anything else we could possibly need. So I don't have her changing pad yet, but this little Snuggle Me lounger kind of of looks the exact same shape and size so I'm placing that there along with a couple little trinkets on the dresser. I'm sure these will be switched out for more practical things like diapers and wipes and butt cream in the future but for now I could just decorate nice and cute in here. I'm also going to be adding a Burt's Bees fitted crib sheet to her mattress just to make the room feel a little bit more pulled together and don't go to the comments. Trust me, I know you do not leave pillows or stuffed animals in the crib with babies. This is purely just for it to look cute for right now. We will not have her sleeping with a pillow or any stuffed animals or blankets or anything until it is safe for her to do so, but they are just too cute and too sweet to not include in this room and to have out on display. I'm also pulling in her Love Every play mat. Just like the rocker, it might live downstairs, it might live upstairs, but for now, it is still cute in here. And do you guys remember how this room looked when we started? Just a crazy dumping ground and how it looks now. I think this is like a dream little nursery for any little girl, even up until when she's a toddler or a bit older. Who knows how long we're gonna be in this house for, but I can't wait to welcome her into this space and to share any future updates and things that change in this space, because trust me, I know things will be changing to more of a functional look in this room, but I want to thank you guys so much for following along on this journey. Thank you for following my channel. Once again, give it a like and subscribe if you can't wait to see more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!